It is only enough to think Jesus. That statement again is not made in the face of any other punishment. Now, why should we be concerned about this particular execution? All of us have heard varying narratives of this entire incident that has happened. Of course, the inception of this incident occurred in the destruction of the Babri Masjid, which in turn led to riots in Mumbai, in which mostly Muslim people were killed. After the riots, the bomb blast ripped through Mumbai. And talking just about the bomb blast, we know that around 257 people lost their lives. It can be more than 257 as well. Many more were injured, many more lost their loved ones. Of course it was a heinous act. Of course it was a grave crime against the nation, against society. Nowhere in my entire presentation will I contend that there was anything about this crime that, that is not serious. That we can consider as a crime in my It was a very serious crime. And therefore the trial and the progress in this crime awarded a death sentence to 11 people out of which only one person was executed and only one person will be executed for this crime because the rest of them who were given the sentence of death, their sentences have been, have been commuted. Now, because of this nature of the death penalty and it's on the other hand you have the serious crime, the legal system in India starting from the case of Jagamohan versus State of Uttar Pradesh, witnessing rapid development in the 1980s with Bachchan Singh, Machi Singh, and continuing till very recently in the decision of Chaturgan Chauhan versus Union of India, 28th January 2014, has developed a series of safeguards in the conduct of the death penalty. How must you decide whether to conduct the death penalty and when should you actually do it? This case concerns us as law students, as citizens, because the exact procedure that is the product of 30 years of legal development that promises safeguards in the actual execution of a person has been violated. That process has been violated. We are not concerned with the end. Yaakov Memon was one person who was sentenced to death and he was executed. We are concerned here as lawyers. Our concern should be to the process. To the process which was followed. In this case, the process was wrong. Let me make it very clear that the process that was followed was flawed. It went against the statute, it went, it went against prison rules, it went, it went against the interpretation of the constitution by the Supreme Court of India. And still we did it. How has it gone against all of this process? Now, we start with the trial. The trial started under this law called the Tana, which I am sure all of you are aware of. The Tana was allowed to last in 1995. Of course, the quota replaced it later. Quota was repealed and now we have very special act, which is much worse than the Tana and the quota, called the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, which was amended after the terror attacks in Mumbai. Now, the Tata, as a rule, allows confessions made to police officers to be used in evidence against the person, which under normal criminal procedure, under the Indian Evidence Act, is not allowed to be used in evidence. Section 25 of the Indian Evidence Act is very clear. If you see the case against Yakub Mehta, the sum and substance of the prosecution was that a co-accused confessed to the police and the co-accused named Yakub Mehman as the king. That was all. That was all that was directly found against him. And of course, because it was the Tata that the trial happened under, even though the Tata went away in 1995, but the trial had already started and therefore the trial continued, Yakub Mehman was convicted and sentenced to death with this being the evidence against him. There is something very wrong if you say that a co-accused who has been might have been tortured by the police into saying what he has said. His evidence is enough for you to sentence someone to death. But that is what exactly happened in this case. So if you have very high regard for how fair the trial procedure was, the original trial procedure was, lose it now. Because he did not receive a fair trial. In any, in any civilized legal system, the rule which was followed in Tara and 
And this was the precise reason why the child was allowed to laugh and the quota was also repealed, was that we felt this is not fit for a legal system of a democracy. In any legal system, such evidence would not be allowed. But we allowed it. Fine, that was the child. He goes up on appeal. Of course, the sentence of death is confirmed by the High Court. Appeal with the High Court also dismissed. He goes up on appeal to the Supreme Court, dismissed. He goes on review, dismissed. Now something very interesting happened. In fact, the curative petition. Now there are no rules with regard to curative petition in this statute book because the curative petition is the largest of the Supreme Court. It has been created by the Supreme Court. In this case of Rupa Ashwabhura. Right? But there is some procedure to how the curative petition is to be heard. That procedure says two senior mode judges, the chief justice and the next senior mode judge, along with the two judges who have dismissed the review petition should be curative. Because you need familiarity with the facts in deciding the curative. Because the curative may not be tried in open court. It might just be decided by circulation. So judges who have already read the file should see the file. Again, okay. makes sense, doesn't it? In this case, that was not followed. Even though the review bench or a part of the review bench was available to be part of the curative bench, it was not done. Why? We do not know. While the curative was pending, the death warrant was issued on the 17th of this month in clear violation with the prison act, in clear, clear violation with the Maharashtra prison manual, which says that in a case of execution, as long as some legal remedy in form of an SLP, an appeal or any other matter before the Supreme Court or the High Court is pending, a death warrant cannot be issued. It was issued and 14 days were given. Execution set for yesterday. Right? Now, of course, this curative petition was also dismissed. After the curative petition, you also know that there were mercy petitions filed again. Because the first mercy petition which was dismissed in 2014 was not filed by Jacob Menon, it was filed by his brother. He filed his own mercy petition only day before yesterday. Now, the normal procedure with the mercy petition is that the president acts on the advice of the Home Minister. And the Home Minister has to study the case. Right? The Home Minister should ideally also ask the Home Ministry of the Government of Maharashtra to give its opinion on the case. Usually it's a process that should take months at the very least. But in this case, it seems there was an undue haste that come what may, the execution that was set for the 30th of July should not be postponed. I ask you why? What would have been lost if he had been exit given 14 more days to live? One more month to live? Why do you have to act in such undue haste? Why did the Home Ministry have to? First of all, the President himself has to forward the file on the same day. The Home Ministry decide on the same day. And the Home Minister himself come and meet the President in the evening and ask him to dismiss. And the President also decides very late at night, conveniently, after the Supreme Court session had, was over for the day. Why this undue haste? This is not the haste that you show in other capital punishment cases. There are around 40 mercy petitions pending with the Prime Minister. Some of them have been filed years ago. Should we first come first serve a Why did the President pick this file out of that row? Mercy petitions and do it. These are questions we do not have answers to. The only one that the Supreme Court held is process has been followed. Why? How? I do not know. I cannot answer. And you must judge for yourself. Now, of course, you can say that let's say the, the government acted with haste. And the Supreme Court also finally at around 5 o'clock yesterday in the morning decided to dismiss this petition. Even then, there is some modicum of process, you will say to me, that he was allowed to go to the Supreme Court, right? Even at midnight. That was not denied. To that I will say that the Supreme Court itself has held in 2014, in the case of Shabnam and Salim versus State of Uttar Pradesh, that once a mercy petition is rejected, at least 14 days has to be given. At least 14 days. They have laid it down as a part of Article 21, and they have said that there can be no violations of At least 14 days have to be allowed. Never before in the history of this country have we dismissed 
has the Supreme Court dismissed the petition at 5 o'clock and one and a half hours later a person will send to the gallows. But in this case, it has been done. Now, as reason, we have been told collective conscience will be satisfied, I quote, from Justice Deepak Mishra's final order at 5 o'clock, he says, we are disposed to believe that any further delay in his execution shall be a travesty of justice against law, against prison rules, against previous judgments of that court itself. It shall be a travesty of justice. And no travesty of justice on the other side. Because it's young man, because he belongs to a particular community, because the crime was a particular crime in this case. Now, why should we be concerned? Because this entire process that was guaranteed to us by law till yesterday has been violated in this case. This entire process, which we are entitled to, if ever the limit arise, Article 21, it belongs to everyone. You do not need to be a citizen of India. Any person who is in India, that process has been violated. So I am not concerned about whether Yaakov Menon himself deserves to live or die. And even if you are inclined to believe that he deserves to die and was a terrorist and was responsible for gruesome crimes, even if you believe that, which I do not, even if you believe that, then also you should be concerned about what exactly happened to the legal process in this case. That is the larger question. And what will this precedent be used in the future for? Thank you very much for coming.